The movie begins with Jenna and her boyfriend returning home after having dinner with their families. However, on the way, they get into a deadly car accident. Jenna survives with minor injuries, but her boyfriend is not so lucky. He dies on the spot, leaving her terribly scarred. Cut to three years later, Jenna is still recovering from her loss. She hasn't even dated anyone, fearing that she will lose them again. One day, Jenna's childhood best friend Renee invites her to spend time at a lakeside cabin. She accepts the invitation and goes to the cabin on a speedboat with Renee and her boyfriend Michael. They are also joined by Michael's friend Ian, whose uncle owns the cabin. It soon becomes clear that Michael is playful and carefree in nature, as on their way there, he entertains the girls. After an hour, the group eventually arrives at the cabin and meets Ian. Ian's uncle Wade. The latter has prepared some shots as a welcome drink. Everyone gulps him down within a flash, but Jenna politely declines and goes inside to take her medicine. However, after a brief contemplation, she decides against taking any pills, as they make her dizzy and dependent on others. That night, during dinner, Wade tells the group about a local festival and reveals that he has secured tickets for them. He then welcomes Ian and his friends to come and have a good time there. Later, as Jenna goes out to play with Wade's dog, she notices him giving Michael some weed. Jenna discusses this with Renee, and the latter reveals that Michael has a drinking and smoking addiction. She says that she has tried to convince him to quit many times, but without success. Renee then asks her friend if she is having a good time, and Jenna assures her that she is okay and having fun. Meanwhile, Wade leaves early for the festival, saying that he is responsible for arranging the fireworks. The rest of the group also prepares to leave, but just then, Michael finds a sauna in the cabin. Not wanting to pass up such a good opportunity, he convinces the others to take a steam bath before going to the festival. Jenna is seemingly not comfortable with this, but when her friends insist, she agrees. She then heads upstairs to prepare for the sauna. In her room, Jenna removes her late boyfriend's ring from her neck and puts it safely with her pills. Afterwards, she goes downstairs and grabs two bottles of water before heading inside the sauna. As the room heats up, Ian tells everyone that Wade made the sauna all by himself. It works by heating stones in an electric oven, storing the temperature for a long time. Soon, everyone begins to sweat profusely, so Ian suggests going to the lake for a dip. However, as soon as they dive into the freezing water, they feel cold and come back inside the cabin. The guys then have drinks in the kitchen, while the girls return to the warmth of the sauna. Soon, Michael gets wasted, and he returns to the sauna with Ian. There, he asks Renee to accompany him to their room, but she refuses, as she doesn't like to stay around him when he's drunk. She then keeps on berating him, so Michael leaves by himself to have more drinks and weed. After he goes out, Renee expresses her frustration with Michael's drinking problems. She mentions that whenever they go to a party, he always gets wasted and she has to take care of him. He was very kind and understanding before, but now he has changed. However, Ian, who is also present in the room, comes to his defense and attempts to provide an explanation for his friend's behavior. Listen up, babes. My friend's not an alcoholic. He just likes turning up. This only intensifies Renee's anger as she is fed up with constantly looking after everyone. Just then, everyone hears a loud noise coming from outside. Worried that Michael may have tripped and hurt himself, Renee decides to check on him. However, for some reason, she isn't able to open the sauna door. Puzzled, Ian also tries to open it, but without success. Jenna begins to panic and starts screaming at the top of her lungs, fearing that something bad has happened. Renee quickly calms her down and inquires if she has taken her medication, but Jenna admits that she didn't take her pills because she is trying to live without them. Soon, everyone begins to get desperate, and they yell out for Michael through the small glass window. However, even after multiple attempts, they do not get any response. Ian is sure that Michael is pulling a prank on them, and he'll eventually let them out. However, Jenna reveals that Wade gave him weed, so even even if this is a prank, Michael will forget that he has locked them inside the sauna. That must be some good weed. As for Renee, she remains completely neutral, perhaps because she is about to be cooked in the sweltering sauna. After the three are done with their mini argument, Ian looks through the glass window and notices that there's something blocking the door. Renee suggests breaking the window, but Ian doesn't want to start damaging his uncle's property just yet. He insists that they will find another way out, assuring them that they have an ample air supply. He further emphasizes that their main concern should be the increasing heat. Jenna then notices something behind the thermometer, and Ian explains that it's a thermostat. However, the group can't turn the heat off using it because the controls are located outside the sauna. The temperature can only be changed from outside, and the thermostat only signals the heater to turn off when the desired temperature is reached. 
Therefore, Ian advises the girls against messing with the thermostat. In the next scene, the gas suddenly starts hissing, and Ian worries that the temperature in the room is slowly increasing. Renee grows impatient, and she grabs a ladle and tries to break the glass window. But without success, seeing Renee lose her mind, Ian ultimately decides to break the window himself. He uses a towel and a ladle to pull out a burning rock from the heater. He then dumps it in water to cool it down before grabbing it and repeatedly striking the window with it. It was a badass plan but the glass doesn't break and his hand soon starts to bleed. However, he doesn't lose hope and keeps on pushing with everything he has got. Ian's hard work finally pays off in the end as the glass eventually shatters, allowing some fresh air into the room. They again call for Michael through the window, but he's on that OG Kush, so they still don't receive any response. Ian then takes a look through the window and it becomes clear that Michael didn't lock them in. There's a ladder stuck between the doorknob and the raised platform. Nevertheless, the girls breathe a sigh of relief as the room gets considerably cooler. However, Ian reveals that the heater is going to turn back on because they had set the sauna temperature to 185 degrees earlier. So, since the window is broken, the sauna will never reach that temperature and the heater is going to stay on. Therefore, he comes up with a solution. He proposes wrapping the rock with a towel and using it to remove the ladder. But despite all of his expertise and determination, he fails. With time running out, Renee proposes that they should break the thermostat to deactivate the heat. But Ian intervenes, warning that if their attempt fails, the temperature inside the sauna could rise to a dangerous 250 degrees. This leads to an argument between Jenna and Renee. And as the girls continue exhausting their remaining energy, Ian comes up with a new idea. He suggests blowing the fuse of one of the lights in the sauna, hoping that it would turn the cabin's power off. Although the plan is a dangerous one, it is something he has to proceed with. So, after a bit of thinking, Ian removes the light bulb and employs a wet towel to forcefully jam the socket. His aim is to blow the fuse and cause a short circuit. Unfortunately, the plan goes horribly wrong, and Ian gets electrocuted as he falls to the ground unconscious. He has become Korean barbecue. The girls rush to help him, but now, the situation situation has become more dire as the light in the room is gone. The scene then cuts to the ground near the festival venue. There, Wade lets his dog play as he prepares to set up the fireworks. Several hours pass by and the condition of Ian and the others continues to deteriorate. However, suddenly, they hear the bark of Wade's dog. They become hopeful again and they start yelling out for the dog. The smart animal hears their screams and learns that they are in trouble. At the same time, Michael also arrives and notices the anxious dog. When Renee and the others hear his voice, they start screaming loudly. But just then, Wade starts the fireworks, blocking the group's cry for help. The dog then runs to Wade and leads him back to the cabin. On the way, they encounter Michael, and it's revealed that because of that weed, he passed out on the couch earlier. Now, he is under the impression that his friends have already gone to the festival without him. Michael says that he only woke up after he heard the dog barking. Wade inquires if he's coming to the festival, but Michael reveals that he already went once, but was turned away because he didn't have a ticket with him. Hearing this, Wade feels terrible. So, he invites Michael to his home for some more weed. On the other hand, Renee and the others run out of water and she grows increasingly impatient. In a state of desperation, Renee prepares to smash the thermostat with a rock, but Jenna grabs her and tries to stop her. During the struggle, Jenna accidentally strikes Renee in the head with the rock, causing her to lose consciousness. Jenna is instantly overwhelmed with regret, and she cries while explaining that she didn't mean to hit her friend. In response, Ian moves the unconscious girl away from the heater and assures Jenna that everything will be fine. However, Jenna is shaken by the ordeal, and she continues to explain herself saying that she was only trying to stop Renee from destroying the thermostat because Ian had earlier said it would result in their death. So she killed her. But when she inquires how he knows about this, surprisingly, Ian says that he was only guessing. This leaves Jenna stunned and in a fit of rage, she breaks the thermostat herself. Lo and behold, their worst fear comes true and the heater unexpectedly turns on. As the temperature continues to rise, Ian's sense of hopelessness and panic intensifies. In a desperate attempt, he makes the decision to destroy the heater with his own hands. Unfortunately, this turns out to be an extremely bad idea. As he gets burnt to death, he has now become Indian. <laughs> 
Tan tandoori. The heater subsequently explodes, but Jenna miraculously manages to open the door just in time to save her own life. After escaping the perilous situation, Jenna steps outside and hydrates herself. She then proceeds to her room to take her medication, but something just doesn't feel right. This is when she realizes that she is still in the sauna, and she was merely hallucinating. Meanwhile, Michael returns to the cabin after smoking with Wade. When he doesn't see anyone, he smokes some more and falls asleep on the couch. Friggin' Michael, everybody. Jenna, Renee, and Ian are still in the sauna, with the latter being dead. Soon, Renee gains consciousness and Jenna carries her to the window to help her breathe better because of the gas leak. Jenna ties two towels together and suspends them from the beam, using it to keep Renee standing close to the window. She then finds the source of the gas leak and covers it with the ladle just before she passes out. Following this, we are taken to a flashback, which reveals how the problem arose in the first place. It turns out Michael had tripped earlier outside the sauna, inadvertently knocking some things over. Due to his intoxicated state, he didn't clean up the mess and left the ladder positioned against the door, which later became wedged between the door and the elevated floor when Renee attempted to exit the sauna. Back in the present, Wade returns and notices Renee trapped in the sauna when he peeks through the window. Alarmed, he promptly contacts the authorities, summoning both the police and paramedics. As the survivors are finally rescued, Michael realizes his mistake and breaks into tears of remorse. He's not going to quit smoking, though. The movie ends inside the ambulance, where Renee reaches out to hold Jenna's hand, seeking solace and support. So you heard it, everybody. The moral of this story is not to smoke weed, because you never know when you might lock your bud inside a sauna and he'll blow himself up trying to get out. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.